Our mission is to awaken and nourish a passion for learning about the natural world. Well, here at Sela Bamberger Ranch, we're 5,500 acres that has been habitat restored over the last 37 years. Margaret and I decided a long time ago that we were only stewards of this land. And we had seen what had been happening to our visitors, not only children, but college students, as well as adults and landowners that have come three, four, five, six thousand a year. And we decided that the shortage of public land in Texas was so critical that this 5,500 acres should remain open and free of the marks of civilization in perpetuity. We're only an hour from downtown Austin and an hour and 20 minutes from downtown San Antonio. Oh, we bring people into this world where they've got their feet on the grass and they're moving in and out of these canyons and they're witnessing trees and brush and shrub and insects and birds and all living things. It's so important to put people in that classroom as opposed to the stereotypical classroom of four walls and a few windows and a bunch of computers. Well, this is James Bonham Elementary and it's a National Historic School and we've been here for 115 years. When sound waves hit an object, and we're uh, downtown and included in the, the population are uh, several uh, homeless shelters and then we have uh, residential. What we attempt to do is to bring the community in and take the children out into the community. We're providing those opportunities for them to practice the hands-on and to see the world, experience the world, and not just read about it. We became aware through uh, one of our parents about activities that the Bamberger Ranch offered. And so it sounded like a great opportunity for our kids, and we had never had our elementary school children go on an overnight trip. And so we had a challenge there to discuss with parents and to share with parents the benefits that the children would receive. And amazingly enough, the parents all agreed with us. Metz Elementary is a Title I school. Being a school that's located in East Austin, the area is looked at as the poor area of Austin, Texas. It's come a long way. Things are changing. One of the things that, that I try to do is to send them to field trips that are affordable, that are but educational, but at the same time, hands-on. That's the key for the kids to be successful, whether it's in math, reading, sci especially science, is that hands-on experience that normally you can't provide that much in school. Well, I got a phone call from the representatives from Bamberger Ranch, and they, they wanted to talk to me about this great idea that they had on helping students have a better understanding of, in the area of science. And I said, well, you know what, come on over, let's talk. And we said, you know what, let's try it. We have three fifth grade classrooms. Each one went at a different week. And they got to stay three days and two nights at the Bamberger Ranch Preserve. Well, let me tell you, there's been a big difference in our kids. It begins when they show up on the ranch. Uh, you don't see... Uh, a cafe, you don't see a gift shop, you don't see, you don't, you will not see a vending machine. They come out here and you're surrounded by the natural world, so you can't help but become interested in it. And of course, fifth and sixth grade kids, they're, they're interested in everything. We'll feed it tonight. Cool. Pretty. Isn't it beautiful? There's still magic in that age group. There is a sense of, of wonder and a sense of excitement, but when they first arrive, they're so excited they can hardly stand it. And so we have to get through the first couple hours of just letting them kind of run wild for a little bit and let them be excited to be outside without worrying about traffic or classroom schedules or what have you. And then by the time that they leave, we've slowed the pace down enough. The children are taking the time to sit quietly and listen to the birds and observe the small things of whatever it is that we're, we're studying at that particular time that the children have slowed down to the point where 
they are taking in and asking more questions. Being in this setting definitely helps them to experience these things with more than just their eyes and their ears. They can touch it, they can feel it, they can even smell. I mean, definitely the natural world being out here is a different smell. So you use all their senses to really incorporate what they've learned in class and link it to what they're experiencing here. We're looking for all sorts of critters. Look under rocks. And really start looking, okay? Yeah, I found crickets. What's the most I enjoy about the kids is when they come to that point of realization. Oh, oh. Old cliche, but the light bulb comes on. You can see them, oh, this is how that happens. This is, this is where this comes from. Get in the water. Catching pond critters, catching the aquatics, and writing a hypothesis before the children start of do you think that this pond is healthy? And the children look at it and they say, mm, it's cloudy, it's dirty, I don't think it's healthy at all. And then going through the steps of what they collect. And it's kind of hard to see with the shadow, but he's got two pinchers. The diversity of what they collect and what the indicators of each of those species are that indicate health, aquatic health. And the children realize that on their first assumption of, of this pond that it, was, that it was not healthy, and of course they would not want to drink it but there's all sorts of life in that pond and they're, each one of those has a different niche in a tiny little world in the pond. That's been a big epiphany that the children have had a blast collecting critters, putting them under the microscope and seeing the small things. He found a cricket. His brand at the county courthouse. That's what Mr. Bamberger did when he was thinking what brand he wanted for his ranch. He decided, well, they sat down and they decided what they'd make. And he decided to make a small letter D and a small letter B connected by an S for Sela. His name is David Bamberger. And that's what he decided he wanted his brand for his ranch to be. So when they first arrive, we're telling them the history of the ranch. We're impressing upon them that this is a working ranch. And they meet Scott Grody, our ranch manager, to be exposed to cattle and horse operations so that they understand from the very beginning that this is a ranch and what is the importance of agriculture. Again, that doesn't hurt him. He'll stand perfectly still. Then we take them down to the, to the lake. That's usually a kind of a mind-boggling experience for them because even though watershed has been mentioned in school, it didn't mean anything until they're standing on the land and looking and you say, you know, all of those hills, every one of those, if water lands on those, it's gonna come down, it's gonna be in the creek and that's the watershed and that everything is a watershed. So there are some sort of unifying themes that we try to bring into their awareness. Watersheds, the ecosystem as a whole. Every lesson or every topic that we discuss is followed up with a journaling activity so that the children can process what they just discussed or experienced and process it into paper. Oh, oh, oh they want to pick one of those insects. The full day that we have them here, the, the second day, we begin with the earth sciences and we, we start with soils. This, this is silt. Over there. What is this? Clay. 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 What is this? Sand. Sand. Are these three the we take them to our dinosaur tracks and we talk about sedimentary rock and our, how these, these formations of limestone have tracks in them. Did dinosaurs make a track in a rock or did they make tracks in mud? Five fossils and flint. Geologic time scales, wow. kind of a hard concept for children to really grasp. So I think that seeing, starting with soils and then going through the dinosaur tracks and then doing fossil collection is good for children to begin to get a scope of, or the sense of time, really, in geologic sense. And then in the afternoon, we switch from earth sciences and we go to life sciences and we have a, one volunteer that does a wonderful bird adaptation presentation that the children are very engaged in. Is he going to eat a snake with that beak? No. Is he going to eat big grasshoppers? No. Is he going to eat... Really begin to understand the different shapes of beaks and what birds are adapted for. He'll, he'll, he'll like dive down and he'll put his mouth in the water so he can catch... And he gets lots of fish. He doesn't miss Why would the bee go to this flower. We also do a beekeeping and pollinator discussion. Look at the honey. Look at that. And the children get to see live bees in an observation hive. Both of those presentations focus on adaptations and that's a strong concept that the children are learning in their science curriculum. Very opportunistic. They will kill any small prey they can find. 
And in the evening, we followed up with a volunteer, a wildlife rehabilitator, and she usually brings at least one screech owl and a Harris hawk. So again, we're talking about adaptations. And then for their evening activity on that night, we take them on a night hike. And that is across the board an experience those children have never had is going hiking at night. We start with those children at 8 o'clock in the morning and we're going until 8.30 at night. So they go straight to bed, they're exhausted. And then the final day is a little bit slower paced. And we do a little, a little bit more hiking, a little bit more, a few more activities on the nature trail with them in the morning. And then we bring it all together. The children have to create a habitat at the very end. So we try to bring in all the concepts the children are required to create a habitat where they must have a soil, they must have a plant, they must have an insect or aquatic invertebrate and a bird or a mammal. But to kind of bring in all of it together to get the big picture. And then they end with David Bamberger at the country store where we finish up the whole day or the whole program with them talking about heritage conservation. A very leftover and a forgotten subject is conservation of family culture and family history. I like to tell the story of Hess's Country Store and to motivate the children to get in touch with the history and the culture of their family by calling upon or communicating with grandparents. But how many of you kids will pledge that within the next week or two at the most, you will visit and talk to and question and hug a little bit on your grandparents. Look at there. Look at there. That's the unanimous, wonderful, wonderful one. It's a wonderful conservation ethic that complements the natural world and what's the missing ingredient in our school systems today. You should have seen their journals when they came back. I mean, it, they would bring tears to your eyes. How it affected them academically is it the proof, like they say, the proof is in the pudding. We had the middle of the year benchmarks for our science for fifth grade. Our fifth graders last year were averaging between 20, 30, and 40 percent meeting the standards. Now we've got 60, 70, and 80. Yes, we still have a couple of 40s, but compared to last year, these kids have really exploded. I personally feel like it was their experiences that they received at Bamberger Ranch. I'm hoping that our children, if not right at this moment, later on will remember a lot of the things that were said and done on this trip and that they will undertake efforts to take care of our planet because it's the only one we've got. I hope that some of these children from Mets elementary and Bonham elementary after they grow up and go to college will come back and find us and tell us if this happened if they were so profoundly affected here at the Bamberger Ranch that it changed the direction of their their studies and their interest and that they would come back and share with us and tell us that they had a good time here that they learned a lot because I believe that it'll happen I believe that we changed lives that profoundly in the short amount of time that we had with them. Mm -hmm.